the whole point of the ordinals is that they're well founded. There does not exist a sequence of ordinals gamma zero, greater than gamma one, greater than gamma two, and so on with infinitely many terms. In other words, strictly decreasing sequences of ordinals must be finite. So in order to be any use to us, we have to make sure that the ordinals below epsilon zero really are well founded. The proof is mostly fidgeting around with the way we write ordinals as sums of terms, and the main reason it's worth digging into is because it forces us to really think about our representation of ordinals as these sums of exponents. The proof uses the idea of the height of an ordinal. The height of an ordinal is the number of omegas in the largest tower of exponents in the ordinal. So zero has height zero, because there are no omegas. One, which is omega to the zero, has height one. So does one plus one and one plus one plus one and every natural number. 305 is an ordinal that takes many terms to write out, but each of those terms is short. Each term has height one, so 305 has height one. Then omega, which is omega to the omega to the zero, has height two. So does omega to the omega to the zero plus omega to the zero, and omega to the omega to the zero plus omega to the zero. These all have height two because they have a tower of two omegas somewhere in the ordinal, but they don't have a tower of height three. The simplest ordinal of height three would be omega to the omega to the omega to the zero, and we can write lots of other height three ordinals. The important thing to note is that if alpha is an ordinal of height n, and n is greater than zero, then when we write alpha in its canonical form as omega to the alpha 1 plus omega to the alpha 2 plus dot 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 plus omega to the alpha k, each alpha i has height strictly less than n. The first fact we need is that taller ordinals are always larger. Stated formally, if alpha and beta are two ordinals, alpha has height n, beta has height m, and m is bigger than n, then alpha is less than beta. The main idea is that when we write an ordinal as a sum of terms, when we write alpha as a sum of exponents, the height of alpha is determined by its tallest term. The height of alpha is one more than the height of the tallest alpha i. And the order of alpha, the way we compare it to other ordinals, is to look at the largest alpha i. So what we'll do is show, by induction on the height, that the tallest alpha i and the largest alpha i are the same. Formally, the proof is by induction on n, by induction on the height of the smaller ordinal. When n is 0, the only ordinal of height 0 is 0 itself, so alpha is 0, and since beta has height m, which is bigger than 0, beta is not 0, so alpha is less than beta. For the inductive case, we assume that n is greater than 0, and that the statement of the lemma is true for ordinals of height less than n. That means, Whenever gamma and delta are ordinals, the height of gamma is less than n, and the height of delta is greater than the height of gamma, then gamma is less than delta. Since alpha has height n greater than zero, alpha can be written as a sum of terms, and every alpha i, every exponent, has height strictly less than n, less than the height of alpha. Since m is bigger than n, which is bigger than zero, beta can also be written as a sum of terms. Some of these terms might have height less than n, but there must be at least one term of height exactly m minus 1, which is greater than or equal to n. Remember, we always write the terms in order, so beta 1 is the largest exponent. And using the inductive hypothesis, a term of height greater than or equal to n is always larger than a term of height less than n, which means that the first term, beta 1, must be one of the terms with height greater than or equal to n. But alpha 1 has height strictly less than n, so by the inductive hypothesis again, alpha 1 is less than beta 1, so by the definition of the order, alpha is less than beta, which is what we wanted to prove. With that tool in place, we're ready to prove that the ordinals below epsilon 0 are well founded. Let's make a quick observation. Suppose there were an infinite descending sequence of ordinals, gamma 0 greater than gamma 1, dot dot dot, then the very first ordinal in it would have some height n. And by our lemma, 
All the other ordinals in the sequence would also have height at most n. So these infinite descending sequences, these things we want to prove don't exist, they have a bounded height. And using that, the idea is to go by induction on the height. We'll prove for each n that there does not exist an infinite descending sequence of ordinals of height at most n. When n equals 0, the only ordinal of height 0 is 0 itself, so there isn't even a decreasing sequence of length 2, let alone an infinite one. Suppose n is greater than zero, and there are no infinite decreasing sequences of ordinals of height strictly less than n, but towards a contradiction, suppose that there is an infinite decreasing sequence of ordinals of height n. All the ordinals in the sequence must have height exactly n. If we ever dropped to height n minus 1, all the rest of the sequence would also have height at most n minus 1. And our inductive hypothesis was that there was no such sequence. Since all these ordinals have height n, which is bigger than zero, we can write them all as sums. And the idea is that we take this grid of terms and we look at the first term in each of the sums, the first column. Since the sequence of gammas is strictly decreasing, the first terms must be at least weakly decreasing. At each step, the first exponent either stays the same or decreases. But the exponents all have height less than n. So by the inductive hypothesis, the first term can't decrease infinitely many times, because that would give an infinite decreasing sequence of ordinals of height less than n, which is exactly what we know doesn't happen. So the first term must stabilize. It can't decrease infinitely many times, so after finitely many steps, it hits some value alpha 1 and stays there forever. So there is some i, so that after i, every ordinal gamma j's first term is omega to the alpha 1. The ordinals in our sequence, the original gamma i's, are strictly decreasing. So once the first exponent has stabilized, we compare them by looking at the second exponent, and that means the second exponent must be weakly decreasing. It has to stay the same or decrease at each step. And again, the second exponent has height less than n, so it can't strictly decrease infinitely many times, so it must eventually stabilize at some value alpha 2. So after some point in our sequence, every ordinal must start with omega to the alpha 1 plus omega to the alpha 2. And we can keep going like this. The third term must eventually stabilize to alpha 3, and then the fourth to alpha 4, and so on. And this goes on forever. We get an infinite sequence this way. To say that formally, we have a sequence, alpha 1, alpha 2, and so on, with the property that for every initial segment of the alphas, all but finitely many of the gamma i's start with that initial segment. So what's happening here is we're saying that in order for the gammas to be an infinite decreasing sequence, they actually have to get more and more similar. They have to start to agree on the first term, and then later they start to agree on the second term, and so on. And what's left to do is to show that there isn't enough room to distinguish infinitely many ordinals this way. The exponents, the ordinals alpha i, come from the exponents of the gammas. So the alphas must also be weakly decreasing, because we always require that the exponents be weakly decreasing. One thing we could imagine is that the sequence of alphas stabilizes. Maybe there are finitely many values of i where the alphas decrease, so alpha i is greater than alpha i plus 1, but then there's some last value, and after that the sequence is constant. Let's suppose this happens and get a contradiction. Suppose there's some value, say alpha 7 is the final value, so alpha 7 is equal to alpha 8 is equal to alpha 9, and this just goes on forever. Then we pick some gamma, which begins with the terms up to and including alpha 7. So gamma i is a finite sum of terms, and in particular, gamma i can only include this alpha 7 value finitely many times. But then we can pick some gamma j, where j is bigger than i, and where gamma j begins with more copies of alpha 7 than gamma i has but the sequence of gammas was supposed to be decreasing. Since i is less than j, gamma j is supposed to be less than gamma i. But if gamma i and gamma j start the same way, and then gamma j has more copies of alpha 7, then 
gamma j is bigger, which is a contradiction. So the sequence of alphas is not eventually constant. There must be infinitely many values i where alpha i plus 1 is less than alpha i. But that would give us an infinite decreasing sequence of ordinals of height less than n, which is exactly what the inductive hypothesis said there should be. And that's the contradiction we're looking for. Since there are no infinite decreasing sequences of ordinals of height less than n, there also cannot be infinite decreasing sequences of ordinals with height equal to n. And that completes the induction and therefore shows that the ordinals below epsilon zero are well founded.